John Jordan O'Neill, affectionately known as Buck. Buck joined the Monarchs in 1938, where he began a love affair with Kansas City. As Buck would say, he fell in love with Kansas City, and Kansas City loved him back. And it would be an affiliation that he would have with the Monarchs from 1938 through the end of the 1955 season. Buck would later become a player manager with the Monarchs before leaving to go join the Chicago Cubs as a scout. And as a scout, he signed Hall of Famers Ernie Banks, Lou Brock, and Lee Arthur Smith to their first professional baseball contract. And then Buck himself would break barriers in Major League Baseball by becoming the first African-American coach in Major League Baseball history with the Chicago Cubs in 1962. And he said of his pioneering role, I was very proud to be the first black coach, but he says, I couldn't stick out my chest because I knew all of these other great black baseball minds from the Negro Leagues who were more than capable of waving a guy home. Buck joined the Monarchs in 1938. He became their go-to guy at first base. He was a great first baseman, a tremendous defensive first baseman with line drive power, and was always a great clutch hitter and a natural born leader of men. Buck O'Neill had huge hands, but soft hands, great range, and great instinct. As a matter of fact, Buck delighted in letting you know that one season alone, he had one error the entire season. If you got it over to Buck, he was going to pick it because he could flat out pick it. All of those attributes helped make him one of the greatest defensive first basemen in Negro League's history. People often ask Buck O'Neill, what was your greatest day in baseball? And he would just light up like a Christmas tree in remembering Easter Sunday, 1943. The Kansas City Monarchs opened the season against the Memphis Red Sox. Buck would say the first time up, he doubled. The second time up, he singled. The third time up, he hit the ball over the left center field fence. The fourth time up, he hit the ball. It looked like it's going over the left center field fence. He's running the bases, saying to himself, hit the fence, hit the fence, hit the fence. The ball does hit the fence. It ricochets between the left fielder and the right fielder. Buck gets to third base. They're waving him home. He could have gotten an inside the park home run, but he stopped because he wanted to hit for the cycle. Well, that evening, the Monarchs traveling secretary, a guy by the name of William Dismute, 
everybody called him Dizzy. Well, Dizzy had invited some young school teachers over to the hotel to have dinner with the ball players. He knocks on Buck's door. He says, Buck, I got some people downstairs I want you to meet. He walks into the restaurant. He says he walks right over to a young lady. He says, my name is Buck O'Neill. What's yours? She was Aura Lee Owens. They were married for 51 years. So he hit for the cycle and met his future wife of 51 years. I'd say that's a pretty good day. It's really interesting that Buck O'Neill won his only batting title in 1946 after being discharged from World War II, where he had served in the U.S. Navy's Supic Bay, Philippines. And maybe we owe Uncle Sam for the reason that Buck O'Neill was burning that ball up when he got home. Clearly, Buck was glad to be back on U.S. soil. He'd always been a clutch hitter, line drive hitter with great power. But in 1946, he put it all together and actually helped lead the Kansas City Monarchs into the 1946 Negro League World Series. People would sometimes come up to him and say, well, Buck, it's a shame that you didn't get a chance to play in Major League Baseball after Jackie breaks the color barrier. And Buck would simply look at them and say, oh, I was right on time. Had I been later, I wouldn't have seen Babe Ruth. I wouldn't have played with and against the likes of Josh Gibson and Satchel Page. And so, no, I was right on time. I played when I was supposed to play. Don't feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for the people who didn't see me play. They're the ones who missed out. Buck O'Neill was the consummate glass half full kind of guy. The greatest thing in all of my life is loving you loving exactly where he was at that particular time and living life to his very fullest as it was taking place, I think we should all take a page from Buck O'Neill. When I met Buck in 1993, one of the first questions that I posed to him was, what motivated you to want to build a Negro Leagues Baseball Museum? And his answer was succinct, but very poignant, so that we would be remembered. And that is the quest of this great museum, to make sure that baseball's unsung heroes will never be forgotten that those who forged a glorious history in the midst of an inglorious time in American history will be remembered. You could make the case that Buck O'Neill was baseball's greatest ambassador. What Buck accomplished over a tremendous seven decade career as a great player, as a tremendous manager, as a groundbreaking scout and groundbreaking coach in Major League Baseball, and then the work that he did to build 
the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum makes Buck's career one of the most impactful careers in baseball history. I think you're hard pressed to tell the story of baseball without including Buck O'Neill.